Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show, and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. The special guest today is Mike Pocaccia. He is a founder of I Decide Interactive. Mike has been in sales and marketing for over 25 years. He's been called a serial entrepreneur since starting his first business, a landscaping company at age 15, which then turned into a limo company while attending Hofstra University. Then he opened up a nightclub at age 21, a restaurant at age 23, 23, and the list goes on, he says. Mike really honed his sales skills as a licensed advisor at Transamerica Financial Advisors, where he had hundreds of clients in several states. Other reps started to see Mike's success and started asking him for his help, and of course, he was happy to oblige. He eventually became opening, eventually began opening successful financial offices and training advisors to work in them. After seeing the rapid growth, Transamerica soon had Mike speaking at conferences, flying to other offices to train, and attending high-level meetings to discuss the future of the firm. Mike eventually left the financial industry and ventured into the technology space where he founded iDecide Interactive. Mike is an author, speaker, coach, CEO, and most importantly, a father to his two beautiful daughters where him and his family live in Youngston, Ohio. And with that said, Mike, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Rich. Uh, you're more than welcome. I look forward to having you here on the show, and thank you for being willing to share your insights to our listeners. So with that said, Mike, you know, let's talk about, you know, you were in corporate America, you decided to jump off, start your own business. So we'd like to hear that story. Was it easy for you? Was it hard? You know, was it, uh, you know, something to passion for? Whatever your story is, go ahead, tell us, let us know how it all came about to be. Yeah, happy to. Actually, not so happy to. <laughs> uh, so my Transamerica days, Transamerica wasn't, my role wasn't necessarily corporate. Um, the model they had was kind of like a franchise model. So I was able to open my own offices within the Transamerica, uh, under the Transamerica umbrella, but I was really on my own. So there was no salary. It was literally my own business. Um, and, you know, as with any business, there were tough times. I mean, tough times. And the reason I say I'm not so happy to share it because once I did see some success, and as you mentioned, they asked me to go around and train other offices and speak at conferences and conventions. And I would ask, okay, you know, I'd have a conversation with the person hosting the event. I'd say, okay, what do you want me to cover? And they say, we want to hear your story. And I said, oh no, <laughs> it's so hard. I don't like to, I don't want to think about it, but now I've gotten over that because it, it, it's hard for everybody, right? Yeah. Everybody that starts a business, it's freaking hard. Um, and so it was no different for me. You know, I was in the restaurant business for 18 years before I went with Transamerica. So here I am um, switching industries uh, to an industry I knew nothing about, financial planning. And I passed my exams, got my licenses. And then my ex-wife is from Ohio. We were living in California at the time. And I said, you know, there are no offices for Transamerica in Ohio. I said, I really think we should move there and kind of spearhead that, that area. She did not want to go back to Ohio, but I convinced her because I'm a pretty good salesman. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do? <laughs> we moved back to Ohio in February, middle of the winter. She does not want to go back. And... Uh, we just had a new baby at the time. We were pregnant at the time. New baby came in March. Uh, we already had a two-year-old. So she's at home taking care of the two-year-old, pregnant with a new baby. The new baby is born. The new baby is born with some health complications. And here I am gone all the time trying to get an office and a business going, right? So I was gone all day. I was gone from morning till night and in the evenings I would see clients because clients in the financial space wanted to see you know meet after dinner so I would come home 10 11 o'clock at night and I remember like it was yesterday my daughter had something wrong with her her where she would scream constantly the new baby oh, no. 
I mean, constant, I mean, blood curdling screams. So it's not like colic. I mean, it was incredible. And I remember walking and pull my car in the garage and I'd stop before I opened the door to the house. And I literally remember like it was yesterday saying, God, please let there be peace in this house. And there was no peace. Every time I walked in, I would, my wife would be sitting on the couch trying to console the baby. She's crying, the baby's screaming, two-year-olds trying. I mean, just, and it got so bad that I actually filed bankruptcy. So here I am telling my wife, let's go move cross country from beautiful Southern California to Ohio in the middle of the winter. And it's going to be awesome. I'll build a business for us. And here I am failing tremendously failing right so to the point where we're filing bankruptcy and she's home alone all day with a screaming kid while i'm trying two kids while i'm trying to build a business so um it was rough that's why i said the story is hard to tell um but there's oh it's hard for everybody like i said and that's kind of why i don't like this new instagram culture where you see people you know on private jets and everything it makes people think that it's easy you know all i have to do is start a business and i'll be on a private jet that's not the way it works, you know, and, it, 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 and then when you do try and start it and you feel, you realize it's hard, then you get discouraged, you, you get down on yourself, you think it's you, what have I done wrong, what, what, what's wrong with me, it's not you, it's everybody, right, it's hard for everybody, I don't know one successful person that didn't go through some form of what I just said that I went through, right, if, they, if they've made it, they've overcome a challenge, and, and um, So at one point, I remember it got to a point where I just said, okay, I have to find a mentor and do exactly what they say. And I did. I found a mentor and uh, I said, you know what, just just tell me what to do. I give up. I submit. Just tell me what to do. And I swear I'll do it. I need to win for my family. And um, I did. I still work just as hard, but I was working on the right things and focusing on the right things. And eventually started to turn around and went from within two years, it was a whole new life. Within five years, I was one of the top performers in the entire company. Um, and, you know, speaking in front of 15,000 people and just and I, I, if you would have told me back when I was filing bankruptcy that a few years from now, I'd be one of the top people in the company living in a big, beautiful house and everything's going great. I would have said, you're out of your mind. But mm-hmm. One of the things I did realize that, you know, you have to go through hell in order to, to, to win. But the problem is, Reggie, you know this, right? A lot of people, when they say I'm going through hell, my, my response was always, well, go through hell. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, don't, don't, don't stay there too long. Stay there, right? It's, 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 it's going through hell. Well, then go through it and get the hell out. Um, <laughs> because a lot of people get stuck there and they keep doing the same things again and again, expecting a different result, right? Um, so I didn't do that. I found a mentor and uh, and I, I got the hell out of there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's kind of my story. Is and it's not different than most stories. Like I said, I mean, it's probably similar to yours. And well, it's it's your story, and uh, there's always a compelling engine behind our motivation. Uh, it looks differently for each person, uh, but you're you were you had entrepreneurship in your blood. Yeah, it sounds like that you couldn't really, you know, contain that, right? It kept on oozing out of you, whether you're working for Transamerica or running a restaurant. So it's something that you you kind of did you inherit that, or is that just kind of you just kind of had that feeling? I think so. My dad was an entrepreneur. My older brother started his own welding company, and then a crane company, and then you know then there was me. So I mean, I I, I never liked the idea of being forced to work certain hours. You know, I always wanted the flexibility to do what I wanted to do. That's actually how I started the first business, the, the landscaping business. I was 15. That came because I just started. Actually, I, I wanted to go to the beach with my friends all the time all summer. So, but I needed some money. And I said, well, I can't get a job there. I won't be able to go to the beach. Well, if I, if I start my own business and I start mowing lawns myself, then I can do those after the beach and I'd still have money coming in and no one can tell me when I have to work or how much money I can make. And that kind of just sparked it on and just got even, you know, it, it grew from there. But I, I just love being in control of my own destiny, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of risk, but, you know, there's the risk reward with everything in life. Okay, well, yeah, so your story is a rough one. Okay, so you obviously uh, you've been in biz- multiple businesses. Uh, what did you gain? Or what if you were to look back and say, what's maybe one or two things you would do differently today if you could coach yourself back then? That's a great question. I would have definitely found a mentor sooner um, because I was passionate about what I was doing. 
But, you know, I was a yeah, but I have a term that I use is called it a yeah, but, you know, I was one of those guys where if you tell me what to do, I'd say, hey, yeah, that makes sense. But, you know, yeah, but can't we do this way? Yeah, but can't we do that way? Because I had been in business for myself before and I thought I knew better, right? Yeah. And I've also coined a phrase called an ask call where people, and I was an ask call, you know, I would ask people, what do I have to do? And they would tell me and I wouldn't do it. I mean, that's <laughs> I love it. an ask I would, I love it. I would find the right mentors, and and Rich, you know this too, right? You, the right mentors don't have to be the same person for every area of your life. Like the mentor I had for business when I first started to see some success was not necessarily where I wanted to be in my family life. So I found another mentor for my relationships with my family. Found another mentor. They one of the mentors I had in my business was definitely not where I wanted to be financially. He would squander all of his money. So I said, okay, I need a different financial mentor, right? So yeah. I don't think it's smart to, to uh, put all your eggs in one basket or just follow one person blindly because none of us are perfect in all areas, right? So yeah, I think that's very wise. Uh, it's, it's, thanks for clarifying that for our listeners. I think that's really important to, to know. But Mike, you've come out on the other side. You came on the other side out of hell, <laughs> as you mentioned, where you went through it. And, and uh, so what are some decisions you made? Uh, I know having a mentor would be one of them, but what other decisions you, did you make that would contribute to your success? Well, I, you know, from a personal growth standpoint, I've always been a, a personal development advocate. You know, I'm, I'm, I believe in constant, never-ending improvement, right? So I, I've done the Tony Robbins seminars and the, you know, read books and, and try and exercise probably not as much as I should. Uh, but that's one of the things I hope to change in 23, right? So um, we're all works in progress. So yeah. I think uh, I think self-development, because well, it's some things that we're not taught, at least I wasn't. You know, I wasn't taught um, the positive mindset and and all the things you learn from a Tony Robbins or an Ed Milet or a Jay Shetty. You know, those are some of the guys that I look up to um, and that I take counsel from. But I think um, that's incredibly important to continue to grow spiritually, mentally, physically, um, and just keep working on yourself. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, let's take a commercial break. Okay, you started a company called I Decide Interactive. That's correct. Um, tell us about the company, who your customers are. Is there anything you want to promote or let our customers be, or let customers, our listeners be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when I was running the Transamerica business, I did, I was, we had a seminar selling business and we were doing, I was doing five, six seminars a week. Um, mm -hmm. But it got to a point where I said, man, because I would do a seminar and half the eyes would light up when I talked about a certain topic, but the other half would go dead. And then I'd switch topics and this uh, this half would light up and that would go dead. And I said, man, I wish there were a way to let the let the audience choose what they're interested in instead of me forcing them to see everything about us. Um, and so I was on my way to do yet another seminar one night and I got the idea for this interactive experience. And I called a programmer that I knew and I said, hey, you know, could we do a, something where I can just click a button and send a link and it's got an interactive presentation where they can make choices, they can answer questions. It'll kind of guide them through it. Kind of like a choose your own adventure type of thing. And he said, yeah, we can do that. And I said, but can I do calculations and stuff right in there? And can it notify the person that sent it of who watched it and what the responses were? And he said, yeah, I think we can. And it, I was on the side of the road for an hour and, uh, and millions of lines of code later, we have I Decide Interactive. So I Decide is a way for you to share your story in an interactive way. Like I said, kind of a choose your own adventure path, choose your own path. Um, but it allows the viewer to be in control, not like a video where I'm sitting there, I have to watch the entire thing or a webinar uh, where, you know, I've seen this a lot too, where, you know, people will do a 30 or 40 minute webinar. Well, I, Maybe what I was interested in was in minute 26, but I didn't make it past minute 12 because I got bored and I left. Where if with an I decide, I can go right to what I'm interested in. The close rates, of course, skyrocket. So that's what it is. And that's what it's. Um, that's so what it's this saying. is a little clarification for me, if nothing else. Uh, so this is an online course that I would uh, you pick a topic, you have a variety of topics. Are they all, in fact, what type of topics do you just have you yeah. know, in, your, in your program? It's not necessarily a course. It's more of a presentation tool. Okay. So, okay. Like, 
yeah, marketing, I can do a sales presentation or marketing presentation. Now we have, uh, in the past election, we had political candidates use it for, to share their, the, their, um, their stances on certain topics. And, and so it's a way for you to get your message across in an interactive way. Okay. So this is a tool that I would, you would help me use for my purposes. Yeah. That's, okay. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah, good. Who owns a business? Anybody who's uh, doing sales. I mean, there is no better way, in my opinion. But I'm a little biased uh, to <laughs> share the message because it captures the person's attention. Right? They're touching the screen. Their name is in the presentation when they see it. Uh, we can show the real time, date, and time in the presentation, so they're immediately drawn in and going, "What is this thing? I've never seen it before. I've never seen anything like this before." Where I'm in control. And they just touch the screen, they're answering questions, they're having fun learning about your product or service. And it's just, the results are through the roof. So it's very cool. I, I probably should have, in hindsight, we could have had an interactive demo here because I think it's a very unique idea. It's something I haven't seen before. So maybe uh, we'll definitely put some links uh, of how they can get a hold of you at the end of the show, which we'll talk about again in a minute. Uh, it's very exciting, very exciting. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. You know, you're obviously a weathered, seasoned veteran of tough times. So you've gone through it. Um, we're both at this vintage where we've seen a lot of different eras in, in the economy and recessions and increased interest rates and et cetera. But I, for one, have never seen them all in one year like we had in 2022. Uh, we're heading into 2023. This is January 2023 right now. Uh, I think we still have some of that lingering uh, concerns about our country, our economy, et cetera. So as a founder of a company, how are you navigating? How did you navigate 2022? What do you, how do you think you're going to navigate 2023 and dealing with all the different headwinds that may affect your business as a founder? But also, how are you navigating it for yourself? You know, how, what gets you up on Monday morning? And how, how do you uh, get charged up to go ahead and lead the team to uh, you know, give it its full, its full effort? Great question. So as far as the business goes um, in 2022, you know, I think any business needs to constantly innovate, right? So you need to get better and better um, because if you don't, somebody else is out there doing it, right? And they're going to come and blindside you and take, take your, your entire customer base. So what we've done is we basically put the pedal to the metal and said, okay, we've done well over the past five years and we've got very big clients where we've built um, the the initial product was more of an enterprise product so everything was custom built every presentation was custom made for the customer um, which was fine it worked well but it, we were leaving out a huge portion of the population right an individual sales rep a mom and pop business owner so we said you know what i said we've got to We've got to double down. We've got to build a way, build a, an, a way for people to create their own presentations. So we did for about a year and a half, almost two years. We've been working on this this interactive, uh, so just kind of a do it yourself, build it yourself product. So now anybody could build their own interactive presentation for a hundred bucks. Um, and so now it's time to roll. We've been testing it, soft launching it, you know, getting feedback. Um, and now 2023 will be a full on rollout of that product and continue to improve upon that based on the feedback that we get. So long answer to your short question, and I apologize, but it's basically doubling down and saying, okay, what do we have that works? How can we now grow that market? You know, how can we hit different markets? Like I said, now we've gone from sales into the political world. We've got people using us for fundraising now, um, you know, for nonprofits. So we've got different avenues that we're trying to focus on and break into and different demographics within those those uh, those distribution lines. So now we can focus on enterprise, mid-level, small businesses and individual businesses as well. So on the business side, I guess that's my answer is we're doubling down and expanding everything because we have to. Um, so on the personal side, like I said, I mean, once you've been to a bunch of self-improvement seminars and workshops, you pretty much know what you have to do. But unless you're doing it, you don't really know it, right? <laughs> There's a difference between knowing what I have to do. I know I shouldn't be eating sugar and pasta all the time, but doing it is another story, right? So... My focus personally in 2023 is, okay, you know it, you've been doing it, you've been learning it. Now let's focus more on actually implementing it and putting all that stuff into action. 
So yeah. but as far as yeah, matter, I think you're right. It's 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 not a matter that we're short on intellect. <laughs> we're short on want to. Yeah. Um, yeah. With the internet and everything else, you can go to a Tony Robbins seminar or any workshop on on personal development, and it's probably nothing new that you're going to hear, right? Mm -hmm. For most of us, anyway. But you're going to be like, uh, yeah, I learned that five years ago. <laughs> so it finally, it finally kicked in. Yeah. Uh, but going back to your company, so you're investing. You know, a lot of people are fearful. They're they can't they can't find labor. They're, they don't, I guess in your business, is it a labor issue? Is something to be affecting you? Is it interest rates? What kind, what what of all the headwinds we're facing today are affecting you and your business? No, for us, it's a. I mean, our product is so unique, so it's not necessarily competition per se. That's not an issue for us because nobody has what we have, but I'm not stupid enough to believe that that's not coming, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I say we've got to keep getting better and better so that our, our people who do try and copy us are going to be copying something that we did five years ago and not what we have now. Um, so, and labor has not been an issue for us yet, thankfully. Okay. Uh, it's just been a matter of, okay, how to how do we continually improve and then make sure more people know about us. So a lot of people still have never heard of iDecide. I mean, we're in, it uses in 89 countries now, and I think maybe 23 languages, but a lot of people still don't know who we are. So that's, it's time to double down on the marketing too for us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, for one, so I get a chance to learn something today. And I think it's, I'd love to see how, so well, let me ask you a question. So on the, on the, is there a metrics that you've seen by doing presentations this way? Because you mentioned earlier when you were doing presentations, people kind of, you know, you lost them halfway through or you lost half the crowd. Um, are you seeing something in a metric format where you're saying the tension level is higher, uh, the output is higher, uh, receptability is better? Yeah, you know, one of the nice things about our product is the we have a full scale analytics system there as well. So you can see exactly what people are clicking on, what they're not, where their interest is, where they're not, what they don't like. We had one company who deals in all different health products, and they thought that a majority of their people would be interested in, in um, losing weight, I think it was. But the thing they were clicking on the screen when it came to the different choices, when it said, what are you interested in, in, in working on? Losing weight, overall health, uh, more energy, focus, whatever the choices were. They were very surprised to learn that more people were clicking on uh, overall health than losing weight. Mm. So, man, we had no idea. Now we can readjust our marketing dollars based on those choices. We're, we're focusing on the wrong thing. So, um, and the nice thing about our tool is that once you do make a change to the presentation, Everybody who's ever watched it, every every presentation that's ever been sent, the next time somebody watches it, they'll see the updated version of it. So it's in real time, not like a video or a PowerPoint or a webinar where you have to wonder what's floating around out there, all the old prices out there. Now we can know exactly, you know, every time someone watches it, they're watching the most up-to-date version. So um, the nice thing about it is we can look at those analytics and continue to improve those metrics. So we have one customer, for example, who's averaging about a 73% close rate. So every time someone watches their presentation, almost three out of four people choose to you know, either schedule a follow-up call or purchase the product. That didn't happen off the bat, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Able to do that because we can look at the data, we can look at the analytics and continue to improve the presentation over time. So... But I, I, I'm honest with people and tell them, look, it's not going to, it's not a, you're not going to hit 73% close rate the first day, right? We have to mm -hmm. look at the numbers and, and make that because if it, the content isn't good, it's just going to be a really cool looking crappy presentation right? <laughs> <laughs> based on the content. So we've got to make sure the content is working through the analytics. You see your product being the new normal? I think it is. And I think you see, well, interactive is kind of a big buzzword now, right? You see it everywhere. Everyone's trying to be more interactive because our attention spans are shrinking. We've got this TikTok mentality now where 30 seconds is a long time. It's like, what the heck? So people aren't going to sit through, uh, you know, a, a long video or a webinar. They, they want to get right to what they're interested in seeing. So it's got to be personalized and what they want to see. So I do think it is the new normal. And, uh, and so for our listeners who are, uh, a solo entrepreneur, someone in sales, so someone uh, coaching, return sales, et cetera. 
Uh, anybody doing presentations? Obviously, corporate America could use your product. Is that pretty much the range? You're making it now available to everybody? Absolutely. The mom and pop business, the individual sales rep. Uh, the insurance is a great example. I mean, it's one of the things we used to do with Transamerica is uh, offer insurance. But we have one company who do, that uses us. They do um, homeowners insurance. They do life insurance. They do all kinds of insurance. Well, I don't want to sit through a presentation on all those things. So let me choose what I want to see. I don't need life insurance, but I do need mortgage insurance for in case I die, you know, I want the mortgage paid off. And click, click on mm -hmm. that. Boom, show me how that's going to work. Let me do a calculator to see how much I have. And the, the, the software will actually let them enter information and then spit out a result. Based on what you've entered, it looks like you need $438,000 worth of insurance. The insurance mm -hmm. agent then will get a text or an email saying Mike just finished watching the presentation. He needs homeowners insurance, um, you know, mortgage insurance for 438,000. He wants to talk Tuesday at four o'clock. This is his phone. And oh, fully interactive, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, well, Mike, if uh, people want to get a hold of you, uh, what would be the best way for them to do that? You know, I'm not real big on social media yet. That's one of my goals for 23. I just hired somebody to kind of get my personal social media up, up uh, off the ground. Uh, so you can go to my website, mikebaccia.com uh, for now, and then we'll let you know when the other channels are up and running. But uh, right. I decide if social media is, of course, full-fledged and, and across the board. But personally, I have been slow on that. So, But mikebaccia.com is up and running, and you can get it. <laughs> you need an inter interactive site, my friend. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you on behalf of my listeners uh thanks for uh, taking the time out of your busy day to share your story which i think was very powerful it definitely drives you congratulations for you being on the other side of hell that's a good place to be not something you want to go back and revisit too many times uh but again thank you for taking your time and all this information will be put together and on our podcast platforms in the next two three weeks and uh it was great to meet you mike Awesome. Thanks for having me. It's been a bit of fun. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks. Rich LeBrun here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show. And include the hashtag Get It Done Entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.